Welcome to the Wall Street Crossover Show, brought to you by Tip TV in conjunction with our sponsors, Admiral Markets. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Mr. Darren Sinden, market commentator for Admiral Markets. Darren, how are you, sir? Yeah, very well, thank you, Nick. Um, let's do some housekeeping to begin with. Um, this show is now going forward, just going to be on a Monday and a Friday, just due to timing constraints. So it's still a bit at one o'clock, but that's a Monday and a Friday moving forward. Um, let's talk markets. Um, a bit of a sell-off towards the end of last week. Yes. Um, as we know, we've been in the markets a long time. Markets don't like basically clarity. And it, it, it was a very uncertain and unclear outcome, I thought. Yeah, I mean, we're no, no, uh, no better off than we were uh, pre the Fed. Um, well, except that we know that they're, they're putting perhaps more weight than we might have thought on external issues rather than mm. internal ones. Um, the, the emphasis is now perhaps on a, on a possible October uh, rate rise, but we don't see that. Um, and uh, and you know, I guess we're looking for the next uh, the next big uh, global macro queue. Aside from that, where that comes from, I'm not entirely sure. But there have been a few news items today that, uh, uh, that well, that have uns that probably unsettled the animals again, shall we say? Yeah. Mm. OK, well, if you're watching for the first time, we've got a number of slides we're going to go through. So let's kick off with the first slide of the day. Data released um, over the European session. What's caught your attention this morning? OK, well, uh, in terms of uh, data today, we've had uh, producer price index or PPI uh, from Germany. This is the August number. We look here at the year on year figure uh, that came in at minus 1.7 percent. Uh, that was below the forecast of a fall of minus 1.5% and sharply below the prior read of minus 1.3%. So producer price index, just to, to avoid any confusion, that's a, a measure of, if you like, factory gate inflation, uh, what people are paying, what producers are paying for goods and services and what prices they might be leaving their premises at. Um, so uh, it's not a surprise that we've seen a declining uh, uh, side to this, this, this part of inflation, um, but it must be slightly depressing for the ECB. Uh, they can do nothing about this, it would appear. QED. Deflation. Well, that's it. I mean, it's you know, potentially good for consumers in the short term, but it's no good if, uh, if this sort of thing becomes entrenched, as we've mm. seen in Japan. It's almost impossible to squeeze it out of the system if it does. Um, but there was some brighter news for the Eurozone uh, in the form of Spain's trade balance for August came in at a deficit of minus 1.4 billion euros, sharply down from uh, the prior month in July is 2.05 billion uh, euros. So uh, Spain's going, you know, moving ever closer to having a, a balanced economy. Surplus. Yeah, and yes, and then ultimately a surplus. Yes, which would be which would be great news considering you know how far down uh, they were, you know, how close they were to a formal bailout, etc., etc. Only a few years ago. And the week ahead. Well, uh, things to flag uh, for people's attention whilst we're off air. Uh, on Wednesday, uh, we've got the Purchasing Managers Index from Germany, um, which is a measure of uh, factory industrial production. Um, just you know, a real clue as to how well the underlying economy is doing. We've also got the same data from France and the wider Eurozone. And the number that I shall be watching closely will be French GDP uh, figures for the second quarter, because obviously France has been to some extent the sick man of Europe mm. over the last two or three months. Um, so it we'll, would we'll be, be interesting to see, see. A, a read there. And then on Thursday, uh, quite a lot of Italian data coming out, but the two numbers that caught my eye, uh, industrial orders for July and uh, retail sales for July. And between those two, you get a real flavour of how uh, the, the Italian economy is actually doing. Understood. OK, so let's move on to the European movers this morning. OK, uh, well, a couple of... Uh, of stories broke over the weekend mm. and they've influenced prices in these two names. First of all, Volkswagen, that's ticker VOW uh, in Germany, uh, one of the world's largest car makers, always vying with Toyota for the number one position. Um, 129 euros 35 they trade this morning down 19.74 percent as the car maker admits to falsifying emission data uh, and uh, well for their their point of view they falsified it in the u.s which was possibly about the worst thing they could have done um, yeah. they could face fines now of up to as much as 18 billion dollars um, and they've had to suspend the sales of all the models that have been affected by the issue and what i think they did is that they installed some illegal equipment in the cars and they effectively were able to pump out more um, emissions than, than they're actually saying that they were. So that's that's going to run and run. And then Standard Chartered, uh, written up in the FT over the weekend, but not in a positive way. Uh, it, the FT suggesting that there are more questions for the bank to answer over its dealings with Iran. You remember it, uh, it fell foul of the US authorities in the last year 
uh, over these issues. Um, it seems that there may be more now coming to the fore and the FT goes as far as to ask if the bank's uh, dollar clearing licence is now at stake and that would obviously be very bad news for Standard Chartered if they were no longer allowed uh, to clear dollars as a result of this. So they're trading down around 3.5% at 697p. Understood. M&A, let's talk about rumours and movers in Europe this morning. OK, well, uh, something of a shock this morning on the M&A front when uh, Zurich Insurance from Switzerland uh, out of the blue terminated its takeover talks with RSA. Uh, Royal Sun Alliance. The bid for Royal Sun Alliance, which was first mooted in July, was worth around £5.6 billion and was seen as a triumph for the RSA's uh, CEO, Stephen Hester, who'd been brought in to sort the group out. Um, Zurich, a Swiss based insurer, had been forced to forced to pull out, or so it felt, after it discovered the potential for hundreds of millions of dollars of losses in its general insurance biz. Does, which do, is unrelated to RSA. Yeah, nothing to do with that. It's, yeah. the, it's business they've done themselves. It was it's like a question mark surely over the management of Zurich on the back of this because uh, <laughs> you'd have to think they should know a bit more about their yeah. own, their own uh, internal workings. Uh, what they're saying is that some of these things have, have come out slightly out of the blue because uh, they've got a bigger exposure than they first realised to things like the uh, explosion in China recently that devastated a you know, large industrial area there. But anyway, RSA shares are down 20% uh, today whilst Zurich uh, are only down 1.22%. Uh, I suspect there's something of a, of a relief from Zurich shareholders. You thought that, uh, Zurich would have been up on the day, wouldn't you? Well, they probably would have been if it hadn't been for the reason, you know, why they pulled out. So maybe they, you know, shareholders wanting a bit of clarity there before any kind of relief rally. Um, RSA has gone as far as to assure the market there was nothing wrong at their end. But it's, you know, you can't avoid the fact that the shares are now back below the price that they were before Zurich approached them. So um, um, lots of work to do there. Understood. OK, so let's now talk about US data points to keep an eye on. OK, today it's quite a thin calendar, uh, but the most important data item really is existing home sales for August, looking for uh, a forecast of 5.5 million sales uh, with, uh, or in comparison to the prior read of 5.59 million. Um, not much to say about that really, no. beyond, beyond that, we, the number will be what it will be, house, house prices and house sales in the US do tend to be moving higher. Uh, and then in terms of what's uh, happening uh, for the rest of the week, on Wednesday, We've got the fl flash manufacturing PMI number uh, to look forward to uh, for September. Uh, that's forecast to come in at 53.1 versus the prior read of 52.9 in August. That August number was a miss, by the way. So, uh, and as we'll see at the end of the show, uh, you know, the, the, there's quite a lot to prove from that data point. Um, and then on Thursday, another important order or, or data point, as far as I'm concerned, is durable goods uh, forecast here for a read of a fall of minus 2% versus the prime months plus 2%. Understood. OK, so let's now talk about the US and pre-market movers and levels. OK, uh, so a bit more M&A and, and transatlantic M&A at that to talk about, first of all, involving a company called Atmel, that's ticker ATML in the US, $9.38 pre-market, up 29%. And the reason is that uh, German-based Dialogue Semiconductor will pay around $4.6 billion to acquire this uh, US censorship chip maker. Uh, the bid from Dialog Semi, uh, which comes in the form of some stock, some cash, is worth around $10.42 uh, per ATML share. And Dialog Semi are, are buying Atmel to try and diversify away from their exposure to uh, the, the handset manufacturing industries. And uh, Atmel, I say, offers sensors. Uh, and you know the, that kind of thing will be used a lot more going forward in the in the Internet of Things as that that all comes online. Understood. And then uh, Alibaba. Alibaba, yeah. Um, uh, B A B A in the U S. Sixty four dollars forty eight down one point nine percent. This is a a giant of Chinese e-commerce. Um, the reason the shares are a little bit lower, perhaps, is that the share lockup that they've had in place since they uh, IPO'd, which covers about 63% of the equity outstanding, uh, expired at the weekend. And so the largest shareholders in the business could now sell down their holdings from today if they wish to do so. Whether they do or they don't, we don't know, but uh, there's an opportunity for them the to do so. The door is open. Yeah. Right, in terms of chart points, cash levels? Yep. Uh, well, FTSE's up on the day today, but only modestly, so it stays within our range. Um, it has been lower than 6,100, but we're going to put that in as, or we'll retain that as, as our downside level because it's all about the close, really. So 6,100 on the downside, plays 6,190 to the upside in the FTSE. Unsurprisingly, the DAX is down on the day, obviously dented by that Volkswagen news mm. and the push into the wider sector. 9,800 now. 
is there a downside level for the DAX to break, break below if it's going to make further losses, whilst it would need to get back above 99.10 um, to think about making gains. So, you know, that, that 10,000 handle is now slipping further and further away. Um, as far as US markets are concerned, uh, they were easier for choice on Friday and the price action wasn't great. We closed much nearer to the lows than we did to the highs on the day. Um, so 19.53 now, the downside level in the S&P plays 19.90 to the upside. And for the Dow, we go with 16,350 to the downside. Plus 16,458 to the upside. Okay, and wrapping up on this slide, the currencies, dollar, euro, dollar. Well, a dollar seems to have recovered, uh, re recovered should I say, a, a bit of composure. Found some friends. Yeah, it has, yeah. So we're back below 113 now uh, as far as euro dollar is concerned. So watching 112.60 on the downside plays 113.20 to the upside. Uh, the Aussie's given back a little bit of ground as well uh, against the US dollar. So 71.36 now is a downside level to watch, plays 71.85 to the upside. Uh, dollar Yen has tested back above 120, so we're now watching 119.90 on the downside, plays 120.50 to the upside. And Cable straddling uh, that 155 level, so 154.98 is a new downside level, plays 155.50 on the upside. OK, so let's um, wrap up with an in focus chart so as we said uh, later in the week we've got uh, us manufacturing PMI. pmis yeah that's this is the flash feed that we're getting uh, this week but nonetheless it doesn't hurt to uh, to have a look at uh, this quite important indicator and what's been going on recently so just to sort of summarize manufacturing pmis measure the performance of the manufacturing sector in the usa via a survey of some 600 industrial companies at uh, the survey measures five specific items including new orders output and employment mm -hmm. But as we can see from the chart here, uh, PMIs have been declining since the summer of 2014. Um, the August read is in fact the lowest since October 2013 and soft new orders were to blame. So if you recall, we were 52.9 was our read in August. Um, the forecast is for a better read of 53.1 this month. But the key here is that a weaker number would, would certainly disappoint. disappoint. And, you know, and the longer we've got indicators like this trending down, the harder it is for the Fed to... Uh, I cut know, rates. High rates, yeah. Okay, Darren Sinden, market commentator, African Markets, thank you for that. That wraps up the Wall Street crossover show. We'll be back same time Friday. So just to repeat, the show will now be on a Monday and a Friday, same time, 1 p.m. Have a good week. Thank you.